This is a visual overview of the QA tracker. We're going to define what it is, talk about how we as a Ubuntu quality team utilize it, and go over some of the key terms and things that you need to understand in order to contribute test results for Ubuntu. As you can see, I'm on the Ubuntu quality wiki page, and specifically on the QA tracker page, and I will go ahead and link to that below the video so that you're able to follow along. So, what is the QA Tracker? As it says, the QA Tracker is the master repository for our testing within Ubuntu. Specifically, it allows us to tie together our results and bugs that we find to our test cases that we've written against the products that we were testing and wrapping that all up inside of a testing event or milestone. Um, and as you can see linked here, there's actually several instances of, of the QA tracker. And these are typically referred to uh, by their shortened names, just the ISO tracker, which you can see here, which we utilize for image testing or ISO testing. Uh, the packages tracker, which we'll actually uh, be utilizing in this example. And the laptop or hardware tracker, which as it says is utilized for laptop and hardware testing. So I've already thrown a lot of terms out at you. Uh, one of those terms was milestones. So let's start at the top and talk about milestones. Um, you can see here I've loaded the packages tracker. And the, on the very first page, you can see that it's milestones for our current development series, which is Roaring. And you can see here that there's a list of milestones. And each of those milestones has a status. So you can see for Roaring, we've had several Cadence Week milestones, as well as a call for testing, which we're still testing, as it shows the status, for Unity Smart Scopes. So again, a milestone is simply a named testing event. Now each of the statuses, as you can see the filters here on the left, showing testing, released, and archived. So a testing status means that we're actively testing that milestone. And you can see that we are actively testing this milestone. Released means that we're finished collecting results for that milestone and the results have now been released and they're just sitting out there allowing you to view and review what happened and the results. And then finally we have an archive status. And if I click that, we can actually see the milestones from our previous series. So here's for Quantal and for Precise in this case. So let's go ahead and click through onto Unity here. And you can see I have a list of products that need tested. And then we have a few columns here uh, with some other interesting information. The very first link here actually takes us to downloads. And in this case, since we're talking about a package, this is instructions to install the package, in this case from a PPA, and to uninstall it as well. Now, if this were an ISO or image, this would be a download link to the image itself. Next up is the product that we wish to test. In this case, it's Unity. And if I click this link, it will actually take me to the specific test cases that we want to run. Um, so we'll hold off on that just for a second. These next three, mandatory, run once, and optional, are actually describing the test cases themselves. So for this products, we actually have 12 total test cases. We have four mandatory and eight optional. Mandatory test cases are test cases that are mandatory to be run in order for us to declare the product in question as tested. The run once test cases are test cases that we want to run at least one time over the different versions. As you can see, there's actually a version here on the side. And in a minute, we'll show you that there are have been multiple versions of this product. And so if we had a run once test case, our expectation, again, would be that we ran through the test case at least once during one of those versions as part of the milestone. Finally, the optional test cases are just that. They're optional, and they're typically included for uh, extra regression testing or for testing things that aren't core to the testing milestone. Now, you'll notice if you look at the top here, there's this link called C Removed and Superseded Builds. Now, if I click this, 
this is going to show me all of the old versions or builds of the uh, product in question. So when we talk about ISO testing, a lot of times you hear the term respin. So this is exactly what it is. A respin is simply a new version of the image. Um, and one of the confusing things can be that your test results appear to have vanished. In this case, your test results have not vanished. More likely, a new version has been pushed out and your test results are now superseded. And they're still there. You can still see them. As you can see, there are lots of old results here. So let's talk quickly about one of the lines in which there's actually a result so we can see and understand how to interpret this. You can see here that there were two mandatory tests out of the four total that have been run and there was one failure and none of the optional test cases were run and then there was one bug. And if I mouse over this, we can actually see a summary of the bug report. And if I click on this, it will take me to Launchpad. If you scroll further down, here's a line showing that one out of the four mandatory and one out of the eight optional were ran. And since it's green, everything passed. Again, showing three out of four with one failure, three out of eight with one failure, and a trio of bugs. Okay. Let's go ahead and click on one of these. So this actually loads the test cases. Um, we've already covered the different types of test cases. And so you can see here, each test case line has the type. And then it shows these columns of past, failed, and running. So past are the number of folks that reported a past result for that test case. Failed are the number of folks that reported a failed test result. And running are the number of folks who were actively running the test case. So this should be updated at some point to a passed or failed result. And then finally, the bugs that were found. And again, we can mouse over them or click on them. If we click on one of the test cases, you'll notice that the test case itself is an expanding link and it's collapsed by default. So if I click on this, the test case will actually pop up and I can run the test case if I so wished. And then we can see the reporter, the last time they updated, the any bugs that they found, and then the, their comments uh, about their test case. At the top, you'll notice again we have a link to the installation instructions, which took us to that page that we've that we already saw, giving the download links, or in this case, the installation instructions. And the other interesting link of note is the bug reporting instructions. And so this would contain custom bug reporting instructions depending on the package that you're testing. So it's important to look at this. In this case, it's simply a link to a launchpad to help you file the bug. Finally, you'll notice that you do need to be logged in to submit test results and that we can't submit test results on archive pages. So let me go ahead and log in. And you can see there's no submission form here because it's an archived result. So if I wanted to submit a result for this test case, I would need to go back to the top and choose the active product build. Choose a test case. And now I'm able to actually report a result of past or failure. So we've covered what milestones are. We've talked about products. We talked about how builds and respins worked. We talked about where your results go and what test cases look like and how to see them. And finally, what the different statuses mean. So I hope this has been helpful, defining the terms and showing you around the QA tracker. Um, now, if you're interested in contributing results, I'd encourage you to check out uh, one of the walkthroughs that's linked here at the bottom. Thanks.